Yeah, so, first of all, guys, welcome to Newcastle, and thank you for being here and giving us the free time to sit down with us, and like I said, busy, etc. Well, when you're on tour, free time is pretty much all you got. Yep. So, <laughs> Easily <laughs> given, easily given. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. So, as you know, Newcastle's got a, a bit of a rich history in the rock and metal scene. Um, how do you feel about performing here and what are your expectations for tonight? Yeah, it's been a long time since we played Newcastle. Yeah, it's been nine or something? Uh, I think, no, surely not. Mm-hmm. No, there might have been a gig that we went on. I think the one brought Bed Right Down in Town. Smash my fingers off. Uh, I smashed my fingers off. Hello. That's some reason I'm yeah, Hello. Right. How are you doing now? Mashed potatoes. You have some whiskey by here. Okay. Oh, wow. And, oh, wait, do we heat it up in the microwave? Or? Yeah, yeah. There's like a huge microwave dish. Right, there, and you're saying there's sausages coming as well, is it? Yeah. Oh, they're in it as well? Oh, they're here. Happy days. Okay. Thank you so much. We, That's our dinner. In, uh, dinner sorted. Sausages and mash, lads. Yeah. Jameson's yeah. <laughs> Jim- yeah. Jim- Jim- and sausage. Fuck it. Jameson's and sausage. Suits us down to the ground. I don't mean to be a stereotype. Tires. I don't mean to be a stereotype, but that's all right. Fucking great. Bre- breakfast of Thanks champions. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah. Breakfast of champions. So as you were saying, uh, yeah, you th- seem to think you were doing uh, 09, is that right? Uh, what Joe, was? what year did you say it was? Uh, but also, uh, oh, yeah. 2012. Yeah, and we played in town somewhere. Um, and that's the first time I think we've actually played here. No, we did a very we small gig, but you couldn't do it because... I wrecked myself. Right, room with my head and falling off. 2012, was that not more Northumberland, I suppose? No, it was right in town. It was down yeah. by the Earl Grey Monument. Oh, right. right in town, yeah. I remember that. And I remember going outside and it was in the winter and it was absolutely Baltic and all the girls had miniskirts on and I was like, there are hard people here. <laughs> no <laughs> one, no one cares. Nails these people. Like, no one yeah. cares in Newcastle. I was like, I want to marry everybody who's walking past me. Like, this is mad. If no they can survive cares. this, childbirth will be a novel. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so like, oh no, Newcastle's class, and uh, obviously, loads of amazing bands from here, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You you know, got, you've got, you've got obviously got, and Viz is from here, we're all massive fans of Viz, exactly, so we, exactly. in a weird way, we feel really well versed in local like <laughs> slang and stuff, you know, like you know, yeah, we know what it is Sorry, to be raggy and reading. stuff, like, you know, like <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, like, yes, reading Viz all our lives, like, you know. <laughs> absolutely love it. <laughs> so, I mainly want to touch on the new album. Bats, which is due yes. out the 10th of November. That's right. Um, I've got to give a shout out to Prosthetic Red Oaks because they have given me a little preview of it and it is absolutely mm. fantastic, by the way. Well, I'm glad you liked it. I Thank absolutely you. loved it. Um, and obviously, with Bats just around the corner set where we released, uh, can you give us a teaser of what fans can expect from this new album in terms of musical style and themes? Okay. Uh, it's very different, isn't it? It's our most diverse album yet. Yeah, it is. Uh, while also being the same. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it is, yeah. Uh, it's funny, uh, Joe said it the other day and he was, he observed it quite smartly. He was like, it's very different, but it's still all coming from a 1980s vibe. So, you know, it's not as if we're becoming a metal band or a death metal band or something. It's like, it's just a slightly broader version of the same sound. Yeah, I, suppose, and I think it? all the songs are slightly different, you know? As opposed to being all exactly the same, yeah. which is what we usually do. And like in the past, we have prided ourselves on consistency and mm-hmm. making records, you know, like SEDC making records that are in same, the same vein like, as each other. And and I think we sort of were very deliberate in doing that for a long time uh, because we were enjoying it so much. But I suppose after a certain length of time, you want to just start trying things a little bit. So uh, the sound of it is quite broad. There's some sort of more mid paced stuff, some a bit more groovy, I would say, stuff. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and then there's loads of speed metal as well. So and there's it. also on the last song as well. There's a little, I'll not give too much away. Yeah, there's, don't give, don't give uh, away the ending. There is a, there is a, there's there's a pretty special outro to the album. And yeah. I absolutely my, loved it. Can my I only just favorite say, would be Miami Vice. As it goes soon very as I Miami heard it, Vice I was like, well, this is different, but it need, someone needs to do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone you know, needs to do it. And you know, think We've been talking about that for a Ah, yeah, years, that someday but... we will. And um, it's funny, somebody said a very nice thing about it. They were like, when it shows up, it's such a mad thing, but it's still a very gamma bomb. So that's mm, a good thing. It is. I think the fact that it holds together its integrity in terms of, like, you know, your signature, is, signature sound yeah. is still there. Yeah, you're not you're, copying you're someone else. Suddenly, still on there, but it's also trying something new, like you've just touched on as well. Yeah, because, yeah. as I said, there are other metal bands and stuff who suddenly are a new metal band mm. or whatever. And you're like, there's, there's a cynicism to that, isn't there? Really? The wheel turns pretty slowly in our camp. Like, yeah. So, yeah. Like, uh, so that's in terms of in terms of the lyrics and stuff. 
I suppose we wrote so much music, we wrote 30 pieces of music for the album, uh, which we whittled down, and it was all done over such a long period. Some of the lyrics were written in one go in 20 minutes at the very start of the process, you know, a year and a half ago. Other lyrics were written, finished off in the booth, you know, so it's very broad, it's a very big spectrum of time. And that means it's kind of impossible to have one thing. You can't be like, this album's political. I think if you could write an album and record it in a week, it might all be political or all sad or whatever, but this is not the case. There's too much in it. So like it's a combination of, you know, imaginative stories, crazy stories, which we always like to do. There is a bit of politics, a bit of interpersonal stuff on it. And then some of it's just literally there because it's a fun name. Yep. Stupid idea that we enjoy doing as a doodle. Spike you Fats know, which is out now. Yeah, yeah, Speed Funeral was like wordplay. That was a game. Basically, a game where it was me versus Domo wordplay. The like, how intro, can you make the rockets in car racing? Genius. <laughs> <laughs> Great actor. Absolutely. Yeah, so we basically just said to each other if the theme was mash up tropes from an Irish wake with speed, rockets, cars, all that kind of thing. And we literally just sat around, like, coming up with the most absurd combinations. So, uh-huh. so we're still, we're still very in the last. Still it's very weird. stupid. Thing. It's a very, still a very stupid bunch of lads. It sounds kind of hackney to say, but for a band like us who... Um, it's all about having fun at the end of the day, though, isn't it? It's all about like us who made a big deal out of... It's all about having fun at the end of the day. Yeah, well, that's it. It's about having fun. Yes, and, um, that's it. That's a number one. Think, Priority number one. And I think the album came from a very authentic place, for want of a better word, you know? There was no cynicism to making it. There was very, very little ego, no ego in the making of the album. Like we didn't even do what we always do, which is turn around at the point where you're making a track list and say, well, I want these songs on it and someone else argues with it. Yeah. We actually decided we're not choosing favourites. We're just going to choose what goes on the record, what goes musically. Yeah. Um, matched all the songs together to make yeah. it sort of coherent. Just to make a flow, kind of. Yeah. So I think in a weird way, it's the most musical album we've made. You know, it kind of hangs together and... And I think, um, like, the outro is a really good example of it. Start, the album starts in a kind of a ridiculous way with the soundscape, and it ends in a kind of ridiculous way with this huge 80s outro. And it's like, I think it gives people, or the people who've heard it so far, seem to say it gives them a good buzz. Yeah, it does. definitely and give me the, the good job. buzz, that's for sure. With the record, really, you know. Definitely give me the buzz. So with the title, But, which is quite an intriguing title, what's the story behind this title, and does it serve as a, a thematic foundation for the entire record? Well, not really. Not really. Uh, so that's came yeah, from we like, yeah we like to pretend that we have like thematic concepts that go through the album but it's really just the picture on the cover isn't it like well, and the, yeah. and the inlay card like well we had the song we had we had a song called Bats in Your Hair and we were going to call the album Bats, Bats in, in Your, your hair. hair and then we kind of commissioned the art to be Bats in Your Hair because mm-hmm. it is our friend Kirsty she's a painter and as her uh, you know when the bats are meant to be like her hair and stuff but then just as we got closer to it, it was actually me and Domo, really. We were sort of saying to each other, well, a simpler type would probably sound more like a record, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were kind of saying to everybody else, look, let's just call it Bats, you know? I don't know, maybe we'll just go tired. Yeah, we've got yeah, right. talking about it. We've <laughs> back and forth a couple of times. Like, yeah. But I definitely remember at some point being like, I want to call it Bats, but if it's called Bats in your Yeah, it doesn't matter either. Well. Again, ego free, there wasn't that much tussling over it. But yeah, like, we just thought Bats is cool. They're really cool animals. They're super evil and stuff in all these kind of tropes. Uh, obviously, in real life, they're just cute little animals. Yeah. The old and in films, yeah. they always go into your hair, like so. You wanted to highlight that, like, you know, yeah, not enough the, people talk about bats going into your hair. Like. Yeah, you know, it's one of those. What I love about it is, it's a thing all people are afraid of, which never happens ever. Bats <laughs> do not go in people's hair. Like oh. that's the thing that doesn't happen. So, <laughs> well, I'm sure it has happened you know, in Brazil and whatnot, no. Mexico. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> you know, God knows. Mexican hair, the Mexican quiff bat. Well, there's loads of bats in Ireland. There's bats outside my house all there's the time. Loads of bats in Ireland, yeah. yeah so, yeah, and they haven't gone on my hair yet. The pipistrelle. There's, there's you time yet. There's time yet. <laughs> they can <laughs> hear my. <laughs> next, next time you're home, you come on. <laughs> get off, off. Let's yeah. be yeah. Basically, Let's a be crown of bats on his head. Yeah. Just leave the hat. So yeah, it's a, so in terms of a concept, once we had the name, and then we saw the art. The art looked really 1960s. Yeah. The camera horror, and we were like, okay, well let's. Let's give the album the visual thing of being a 60s horror movie kind of thing. So the photography, the inlay, mm-hmm. you know, the design, the marketing material, all that kind of stuff goes together and it's all kind of 60s. It was our last yeah. album. We always have like a theme of the albums and yeah. all that. The last album was like Victorian and this one's 60s. So. Like mm-hmm. 60s horror, isn't it? It's a mm-hmm. whole thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you've gone, you've, you've gone with the same artists as well. 
Graham Humphreys. Yeah, same artist. You've used for the last three albums, is that right? Uh, yeah, well, like, give or take. Like, he's done four for us now. He did the Terror Tapes, Untouchable Glory, and yeah. the last one. Uh, so yeah, so like, that's, the greatest, that's just one of the great privileges of this whole <laughs> thing, really, isn't it? Yeah, considering you work on stuff like, like uh, was it? Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. Street. Much did. Uh, Evil Dead. Dead. Did Wonder Evil Dead. Evil Dead post, he did What We Do in the Shadows, mm. Woman in Black. Yeah, he's a legend. And again, that was just reaching out, reaching out to people. Yeah, and very then, lucky. When he did the first record with us, Joe and I went and met him in London. And we went out for the pints with him around Soho. And we just had a great night with him, you know. I think he took a shine to us, like, because we were su- we were such wide-eyed pint merchants. But then, it was a while ago now, like 10 years ago. So we went on the pints with him, and I think after that he liked us. So whenever we came back to him again, he was just like, deal directly with me. So now we... We've always had a direct relationship with him, and he's brilliant. He's very intuitive. I think he he sort of gets the soul of the band. I think you know, yeah. Or maybe he is the soul of the band. I don't know, but I think when I see his pictures, I always feel like he nails it away, yeah. like almost nobody else can. You know, it makes it very easy, doesn't it? Like you yeah. don't have to send them your visions or yeah, so you kind of get with what you're. We're very lucky like that as well. Uh, the inlay, if uh, I suppose I don't know, maybe people don't know, but the inlay is of our albums are really good. Yeah, Rory McGuigan does them. That's just Jay's big brother, I guess. That's Jay's oh, nice big brother. And he's been doing it since the start. I have put you on the because that, that what, the vinyl version. It's of beautiful. It, it's just because when you see artwork like that, you need it in. You know, the worst thing is clone. it's it's October now. We have a box of them in our van that we can't <laughs> sell. Oh, never! And they're fucking they're beautiful. They're <laughs> beautiful <laughs> records, oh. and they're gold. The records are gold and oh. sleeve has oh. one on it, and it's I think one gorgeous. Up. I think it was white one up for you ordered. Uh, yeah, well, the gold is exclusive to our EU merch store at omerch.com. Oh, so. Be sure to go to omerch.com. I'm going to have to buy another one now. Gamma and you can buy the gold one, yeah. Lost the gold. Have to have to keep on it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like, we're very lucky to have people like that around us. Yeah. And do you still keep in touch with Graham Dees? With like, who, sorry? Is it the artwork, the artist guy? Was Graham? Yeah, Graham, yeah, yeah, well, like, yeah, I would talk yeah, to yeah, him. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to post him some of the vinyl and stuff. He, um, we played in London the other day, but he was a horror con big horror festival so I didn't get to see him but I do I send him a message and yeah. when there's any news or anything and I'm going to post him a copy of the vinyl and all that kind of thing does he attend any of your shows he has band? actually never seen us I don't think I don't think he's ever seen us no, but he so. he does you know he's meet you for a pint kind of before the show yeah <laughs> he's and he's like he's an old school sort of punk goth kind of does, yeah, the damned, not like, I think that, yeah but I think he's he's happy enough kind of, with, with the band <laughs> <laughs> just don't think it's it's more damned is his thing. He's crazy about the damned, you know. And he's done stuff for them and he's mates with the damned and all this oh, nice stuff. Um yeah, he's on a different rung now, like <laughs> <laughs> a couple of rungs up the ladder there. <laughs> of the scary rock and roll fraternity, like you know. So Gown Bomb is known for its a uh, unique blend of humour and thrash metal. How does a signature style come into play on this new album? And do you have any standout tracks that you feel showcases? Do you think it's funny on the new album? Yeah, it's beef, you know. <laughs> Lyrics, Bats has very funny lyrics. Bats it does. Hair, yeah. Say. yeah. Um, there's kind of the funny thing is, even on songs that are more serious, there's a lot of turns of phrase and yeah. stuff. We're a lot of jokes rarely, are sort of in jokes as well, yeah, where yeah, people wouldn't really get them, but it's like more like wordplay or phraseology or things we say to each other, yeah, get into the lyrics. And you know, that's, song, really, that's essentially how we write all our music as well. Is like you're trying to make the other people laugh, you know, yeah. people in the band, I'm sure. Anyone who gets it is a bonus. Yeah. If yeah, people so get it, it's a bonus. And if not, no worries. Like, you know. I feel like... No one minds not knowing what any of the Beatles lyrics mean. Like, yeah, that's it. They don't mean anything. And actually, when you when you look into it, you find out loads of more in-jokes. Than yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. But we're just like the Beatles. Just we're just the record identical, identical. All the really catchy songs. And the talent. And the yeah. generational... <laughs> uh, the pan-generational appeal sure. and uh, cultural <clears throat> impact. But, uh, yeah. like Good looks. You can listen. All right. <laughs> so yeah uh, lyrically um, mm. it's one of those things where it's like I think our approach to lyrics has changed over time back at the start of the band where we were just trying to cram things down that were funny or that rhymed mm-hmm. whereas now I think we spend a lot more time on it we have a bit more craft about it Yeah, in terms of what goes in what words go in what words yeah. sound good when you shout them yeah which There's is lots of thing. different ways lots of doing thing. them as well yeah. like you know like if I'm writing the lyrics <laughs> with you It'd be totally different than if I was writing lyrics with Joe or writing yeah. on my own or you're writing on, you know, there's like lots of different dynamics yeah. that seem to lend well to certain yeah. things. Yeah, and different people in the band have different approaches. Like, yeah. 
Domo's lyrics tend to be very finished, like so he'll write lyrics for his own songs normally. Like unless you ask him to, Domo doesn't come to you with lyrics for other things. He give you like a full song, and it's like perfect. Like it came from Amazon, perfectly packaged, you know, <coughs> lyrics and music to fit. Whereas, like I said, Joe will do them, and Joe's lyrics will be really creative and really funny, but like they may not fit a normal structure, and you, you know, like you're fighting with them to fit them into yeah. it. But like they're brilliant for that reason as well, you know. So yeah, everybody's different kind of tack on it, and it's cool as well because I think the three of us will always write lyrics that one of the other two would write. Really. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you kind of get you get something from each person, like you know. Mm. Uh, I think these days the way what I'm doing quite a lot is I suppose a couple of years ago I got mad into how like Rob Halford writes lyrics and a lot of the songs and kind of try and copy that you know thesaurus yeah. and you know nice he's yeah and he's quite concise in his lyrics and stuff you know so and he picks cool words he picks cool words and it's a, it's a real challenge kind of to do it like that you know there's no form to all this nonsense really you know yeah you have to pretend there is you have to pretend don't tell people, right? Tell people we know what we're doing. Because <laughs> they'll never know. They'll never know otherwise. <laughs> so they're not going to twig otherwise. They're safe, safe on that front. Have you had the chance to play with Juice Priest yet? Okay, I'll see. We've never played on a bill of Juice Priest, have we? No? Joe? Yeah, so have you ever done a festival? No, no, we haven't. We've been on a festival with Sabbath, Sabbath and Roses, yes. and West Coast Brother, all that kind of stuff, but yeah, unfortunately, never not priest, with the, yeah. the middle Hopefully, it'll happen sometime now. Someday, someday. Yeah, yeah. be amazing too, yeah. So, Gamma music is often described as high energy and fun. How do you manage to maintain this level of intensity throughout your albums? And what do you think sets Bats apart from your previous work? Ooh, how do you manage to maintain that level of energy? Well, I suppose it's what the music demands, isn't it, really? It's like, that's the rules of the game, really. Yeah, I think as well, though, you start to get energy from the songs as well, don't you? Like, I mean, if we were writing songs and it was all like, you know, Dirty the Black Rain of the Pestilence or whatever, we'd, we'd be really bored really, really soon. Is anyone going <laughs> to? Yeah, no, let's, uh, That's too good. Let's save that for a goth album. Black Rain of the Pestilence. Gamma Bomb goes goth. <laughs> Gotham Dick <laughs> Shield. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, you do. Like, so I think that's that's part of the whole thing is like when you write something you start to get excited about it yeah, like, it's exciting you know, yeah it's like oh there's a new idea because that's the thing like even even if it doesn't seem like it I think the new ideas are what always kind of drag us forward it's like you get a new idea and as I say it sort of gives you energy to yeah uh, yeah to continue on with the idea I think if we were doing even though it sounds like we're doing the same thing over and over if we felt like we were doing the same thing over and over I don't I think it would be a massive it, struggle I don't think, yeah, like, I don't think really we really would because you have to be here yeah, there's so much you have to do to get an album over the line. Like it's it really is a lot of work. Like you should, you have to enjoy it and find it energizing. Like mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Um, and that was nice as well. Like say recording the album this time, and I'd be, I don't know, I'd be working with like say John or whatever for a while, and then I'd be like with Philly, like, and sometimes one thing is a real struggle. Like so, it's nice to like go over to the other person, and then maybe that's easier. Yeah, maybe we'll have a laugh. Our yeah. both will be a massive struggle, and then you go to bed feeling really sick. <laughs> But like uh, yeah, in terms of the energy, we are older. Obviously, we've been in the band twenty one years. Um, it's quite an achievement. Well, a lot of it didn't, it didn't feel like we did anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, you accidentally spent over half your life doing something, and it just happened really quickly. So, mm-hmm. warning, <laughs> warning to people watching yeah. this: that will happen really quickly. Twenty one years is not how really. did you manage with COVID? Well, well I think made that album really well. COVID. Made one of our best albums during COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, probably because we're all, excuse our language, but like our heads were up our arses, you know, like I had no job, was at home, well, living in my mother-in-law's house with my kids, had nothing to do with myself, you know, yeah. uh, you know, Joe owns a hotel, his hotel was closed. There's a tiny little apartment with a small child. Yeah, with a small child and Dom was a music teacher, he couldn't teach anybody music or do anything, so we were all a bit stuck in the mud really, and I think very quickly we kind of realised that the skills we'd picked up the skills we picked up writing tunes remotely because we lived in different countries from each other and helping to get bits across the line for records that we made with other mm-hmm. with the producer, we we realised that we could just turn that around and make our own Still records. Yeah. It was a nightmare, but mm-hmm. it was cool as well. Sending like, having trucks backwards and forwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah and like, but without like, the technology and all. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a nightmare for me. He likes the misery. Because up until lockdown, was your normal recording process? Did you all get together as a band? 
Not know. for a long time, really. Like, we would intermittently say to each other, oh, we must get together and do this, but it wasn't the norm for a long well, time. Well, everything we did would be like, we was there for the, yeah. Well, like, to be the drums. Yeah, but we wouldn't all be together to write, and we wouldn't all be together to record. Oh, no, not, 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 not since, right. not not since right. Tales from the Green Space, really. Or well, maybe like, Tower Tapes, we did on Tower well, Tapes. I was, I was there, there. <clears> for months ago, <throat> apart from Speed. That yeah. was because I had a child, see? Yeah. But yeah, so it's kind of changes again. I think if we had to do it the same way twice, we would. We probably just you wouldn't want to, it, would you? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that was one of the, again. That's one of the exciting things about when we did see Savage. It was like, can you write an album and record it without all seeing each the other? Internet, like the whole thing. The um, only time I saw anyone was Joe came to my house to record backing vocals at the very end. Was that at the end of like at the very end? So the first thing. lockdown was second. Oh yeah, like mm-hmm. second lockdown or something. I think it was. Joe showed I think up. We wrote it during the first lockdown. And then the second one, yeah, it was all recorded and stuff. And then I, I remember that was it. I hadn't seen any other ads. Like, Did you feel as if the pressure may have been off during the Robocomp? Because maybe it's. Well. Yeah, I suppose in a way, like well, we did, we had a deadline. deadline. Yeah, as soon as you get the deadline, deadline, the pressure's on. Yeah, because we signed a prosthetic, and you know yeah. they were like, "Look, we do want this, like end of the summer or whatever it was." Yeah. And even though we were at it all the time, <laughs> you know, like I was in there morning, noon, and night, kind of. Mm-hmm. But um, it still left you up against it at the end, really. Yeah, but yeah, it's always that way. <clears throat> so COVID for us, obviously, it had a toll on everybody, but we should be able to come out of it smelling the roses, really. We made a really good album. And it was quite cool as well, because we kind of brought out the album. We were first. Nobody else yeah. had the albums out, because yeah. everyone sort of waited till the yeah. end of lockdown. Like, I also think everybody else was scrambling to get their work with all and record without a producer. Yeah, yeah, Other bands were kind of like, how do we do this? Whereas we kind of already learned the break, the clutch, and the accelerator ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, and all we had to do was give it a go. So we yep. kind of got there, you know. Yeah. So yeah, we were kind of first out of the traps and in terms of that sort of music. And like I say, it's, it's produced a cracking record on top oh, of that. Oh, thank well. you. Yeah, no, I'm, we're really proud of it. We really are. Yeah. There's a lot of personality. And yeah, and we lost lost our drummer as well. So, yeah. like, it was quite hard in that sense as well. Like, just, you know. Yeah, like, you're not, you're not seeing one of your best mates now. So, uh, yeah, what do you yeah. do? Do you try to do something different? or yeah, you, Even, like, do you go on? Yeah, 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 for sure. All that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Know? Not to mention the world ending halfway through the party. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Tough times, but yeah. so you've come out of the end of it. <laughs> so, Gamma Bomb has a strong following within the Flash community. How do you approach keeping your sound fresh and exciting while staying true to your roots of the genre? Um, we don't really worry about that. We don't stuff. worry about no. Yeah, we Just, honestly don't really worry about what people think. No. Best way, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's why we're. That's why, like, <laughs> it's not over It actually is. It actually is. It's why we're not that popular, and it's also why people who like us really like us. Because yeah. if, if you get it, you get it. And we don't go fishing for people who we don't care about. <laughs> you yeah. know? Like, it's fine. Go, like, Everyone's each to their own journey. So. Yeah, yeah, totally. But like a lot of other bands do. A lot of other metal bands do and stuff. And it's it's the mistake that killed a lot of the classic trash bands. First time around. But, yeah, you know, I think that's the thing as well. Isn't it? There's like a danger of finding success in like a subgenre. Yeah. It's like you get a little bit of success and then you go, oh, let's do that. Like, yeah, let's change, let's change. And then yeah. like, you know. It does nothing for you. Yeah, you know, like Metallica, whether it was cynical or not, I suspect it actually wasn't cynical. I think it was where they were going. You know, they made the Black Album and then all these other smaller bands sniffed the money or bowed to a record label pressure. And all the trash bands all did it. They all made a rubbish, a rubbish album in 1989, 90. Mm-hmm. And it killed them. It nearly killed all of them, you know. Like they had to go home for like five years, some 20 or something. So, you know, I don't think playing to the gallery is bad. Um, Trying to do, trying to. Well, people don't. What people, people don't want, want music that they've <clears throat> already approved of in a way. You know, people sort of the the records you end up really loving. I find a lot of times are ones you sort of don't like a little bit. Yeah, the first time here, like, like records. Yeah, because you need something to like. I don't know. Learn. Smash the doors of perception open. Yeah, you know. I always remember like I got Wayne Dogs by Tom Waits and I had it on CD when I was in college and I used to listen to it all the time. But I hated nearly all of it. Mm. I loved like three tunes, Blind Love, Downtown Train. Oh yeah, I'm like now I can see one of the best albums ever. Like, mm. But over the course of weeks when I was listening to it, I would listen to Downtown Train, which is like his mainstream pop tune on it, mm-hmm. the country tune on it called Blind Love. The re- a lot of it's very fun, juice, vaudeville type music. But then suddenly I found creeping into other parts of it what was good about it. And, you know, and I think that's I think not saying we have that level of density to the music that we're doing, but... You know when you try and replicate something you've done before, I think 
there's a weird like what was it the secret megaphone where people can sort of like they kind of get it that they they're, they're, they're it. rehashing yeah. or whatever like you know that's not sincere or whatever yeah. like people can just sort of instinctively sniff out that kind of thing so know? i suppose for better or for worse yeah trying to be authentic has always been a thing for us and here's the thing like there's no mad money in this no. so you better no money yep so you better enjoy you know, the, Scripter. You better enjoy each other's company and you better yeah. enjoy the we process. Know this, we know this because we're mates. Yeah, yeah well, that's you know? it. Yeah. And it's good. And other men go and play golf and we do this, you know? So and it's kind of, it is uh, it is freeing in a way because it doesn't really matter if we do well or if we don't do yeah. well. Like, we're just going to do it anyway. Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Until. As like, I always say, we're not afraid of failure yeah. because we've already been yeah. unpopular. Yeah. We've been really unpopular. <laughs> and we're, we're quite unpopular yeah. now. So. In a weird way, you're free. Like Lady Gaga must feel hamstrung when she sits down at the piano and goes, "If I get this wrong, yeah. last one, last album was eighty million dollars. If I don't, if I don't get eighty million on this one, I can't buy the house or do whatever. Quick, start my luxury cosmetics line. We don't have to worry about that. We just go. Well, if people think it sucks, about forty percent of people yeah. thought the last one sucked anyway. It's it. That's fine. Well, it's <laughs> I'm more worried that uh, like. Know, it was Joe like the song I wrote? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That millions of people or whatever, you know. As well as before you touch on the Lady Gaga thing as well as um, you you go to the show as well and they'll probably put in like an additional um, or get like, a copy of the album or something just to bump up the sales as well. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So um, I mean we're not above business practices like but that, 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 like you said you touched on it before about there's not much money in metal but you're in it when you love metal you're in it for life on no, it yeah, it's just yeah. hanging out with your mates yeah that's it man um, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what it's about Flash Metal has a strong global presence can you talk about uh, how you've seen the genre evolve and grow over the years and what the role Gamma Bomb plays in that evolution a very small role a very very small role what I would say is uh, the main thing that I've seen change is when we started the band uh, the genre didn't exist Basically, it did not exist. It's gone. It's it gone. Died, it because it was like pre internet. Well, pre the internet that we understand it was internet 1.0. It wasn't, the music was not commercially available. It wasn't commercially appealing. It very wasn't, hard, very hard to get. It wasn't CDs. culturally present. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we used to go to record fairs. We and Joe went to a record fair to buy Sodom albums and Agent Steel albums and Nuclear Assault albums. We started the band because one of the lads went to the library sale in our town. When they were selling off the old, you know, they would always sell your local library would sell all the CDs and yeah. tapes every summer, and you could go down and get books and CDs and stuff. It's been a while since I've seen them, but yeah, I know, yeah, but it was, it was a whole thing. So we went to Neary Library and got all these tapes that weren't worth a damn, you know. But we found something, and so I think the main change is the genre is alive and it's big, like it's yeah. big, although. It's also true to say that one of the biggest bands in the world is the thrash metal band. Metallica are a thrash band. And they have in the last 10 years made thrash albums, which is incredible. Because I think, not saying we did it, but us and about 200 other people did. They do it. You know what I mean? Like the fact that bands showed up playing this music, they noticed that in some respect and felt like it was valid again to give it a go or to prove themselves or fucking try to feel young or whatever it was that they were doing with that. Um, so yeah, the fact that the genre is alive is incredible. When we started the band, we used to spiel off the names of bands in the genre to get people to understand what the style of music was. Because <laughs> you couldn't say it, because thrash, thrash metal made no sense to people. Yeah. So if you like Metallica and Megadeth, people would go, oh yeah, yeah. And then you go, right, that's, that's this. It's us. Because <clears throat> they weren't using it anymore. Mm. Our placement is very small, and that's fine. That's <laughs> 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 fine. <laughs> 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 fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so my viewers will probably give us wrong if I do not ask this question. But as we are in Newcastle, the, the home place of Greg's, the what home is place it, of Greg's. what is yeah Greg's orders? Well, you know I'm a fan of a, I'm, I'm a fan of a vegan sausage roll. I really am. I think they're doing his job, and I always get them to give us uh, I get them to give us a good dose of brewing sauce with it, like. Uh, mm, and sassy. yeah, and quite often uh, they won't have sachets, so they'll have to put the brune into a wee kind of shot cup thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I walk the streets dipping them into the mm. cup. I also like the cheesy oniony slice thing. Chris, what's your what's your Greg's order there? You're a you're a vegan vegetarian. Gregosaur. A Gregosaur. Or <laughs> <laughs> Greg Mond. Uh, vegan sausage roll. Vegan sausage roll is pretty solid, man. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Wild. Get that into me. Eat it under a railway bridge in the cold. I go for the just know, as just as the Novocastrians intended. I go for the alarmingly grey Cornish pasty. <laughs> 
and if it's like a two months and it comes out brown, you're like, whoa. whoa. No, no, you're just like, just get it in. Damp it. Damp it. Ring Stop thinking about it. Could you not spritz water on that to make it wetter? Like, yeah. You could, I suppose, yeah. Put more butter on it. Uh, when I was in uni, I got mad into drinking Nuki Brown because at the time. Nice. It's before craft beer, was it? I was in uni in the noughties, like, you know, turn of the millennium. At the millennium, I was in uni. Millennium, yeah. And, uh, like, you couldn't get fancy beers. So in Belfast, like, Nuki Brown bottles, Nuki Brown was the poshest. We thought anyway. Jeez, I think the worst, worst hangovers you can imagine off that stuff. So, hello. Sorry, guys, I should have turned the light off. <laughs> it's quite The light in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Just needed to say a few bit. Do you know what I'm Rock and roll is and pay like And a gig where I put in, and that would not have made me blink twice. Yeah, yeah, I would have yeah. gone, oh, the light's off now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Phones on, lads. <laughs> We're in a cost of living, no one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially with the pre sales on this one. You know, like, do you know how much that fucking light costs? 12B. I need that. Yeah, sure. Give me them sausages back. Yep. Spending <laughs> their ticket money here, boys. <laughs> so, finally, what's one message or feeling you hope listeners take away from Bats once they've had a chance to experience the album? <laughs> Feel good. Have a good time. Enjoy. Enjoy. I don't know. Like, I think for the first time, this is like where I'm actually really interested in what other people have to say because generally I don't really care. But because the album is so different difference. to the other ones, I am quite curious to hear what people have to say. So in a weird way, I don't want to say anything. I sort of, yeah, you know, I sort of just want to see what people enjoy people say. it. Of course, yeah. yeah I always like, hope people enjoy it. Because we liked it, you know, and I think we particularly liked it. Like you're always pretty happy with the achievement of finishing them, but I think we're actually all quite like, yeah. this is good. Like like we, say, I on, in our personal level, we're all yeah. like, well, this is music that we, that we enjoy. And we um, try, try it something new. Yeah, and it feels representative of what we're into. Um, yeah. So we, I just hope people enjoy it. But yeah, as Tom says, I'm genuinely, like, people who have listened to it and talked to us tend to be such impressed people or friends yeah, of ours. Yeah, yeah. Leave the YouTube who, comments who, who to get probably, the yeah, true yeah, honesty. Yeah, like, there you know. go, exactly, yeah. See what happens on Reddit. Yeah, when the keyboard royals come out. Sure. Yeah, but that's, People that's fine. People are in the divorce as well. Like, they will not tell you the truth under any And then they'll come out on the internet. Yeah, so, like, yeah, right. it's also important to reinforce again. We don't really care what people think about that. <laughs> it's the best Honestly, attitude to have, really. really. Yeah, well, really you, is. no choice, really. Like, and, uh, <laughs> maybe if I'd made millions off it, I'd be sitting it's in the house fretting about my security. But, like, it's one thing that one of my friends has always said don't look at the comments because yeah. not the tr- comments trigger you. Steve, yeah, yeah. Steve, Steve Hart no reads all the things people say about him. Oh, does he? Yes, he does. Oh, and it makes him really that. annoyed. And, uh, I said, well, I didn't read a lot of it because it doesn't make me annoyed. Um, the Irish author, Maeve Bench, she said a brilliant thing. Don't worry what other people are thinking about you. Other people are not thinking about you. That's, <laughs> that's a good one. Exactly, exactly. Well, well, thank you very much, lads, for your time. I'll Thanks so much. much. Cheers. We'll let you get some, been champion. Get some food in you. Some well, Looking, here's your hat. Don't forget your hat. Man. Looking forward to the oil. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>